Hello, it's me again, Morbid Sleep. So, I came across this website when I was researching for, or not really researching, but kind of editing my part one of the Metal Stereotypes video, and I thought that I could turn this into hashtag content TM, and I'm recording it kind of badly right now. I'm recording it through my laptop headphone microphones, microphone, just one, um, because that was, frankly, it was just the easiest way to record audio because I am screen capturing this so that I'm going to read this whole website to you out loud so you can enjoy that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to read it so you don't have to, but also I'm going to read the entire thing so it'll be like an audiobook, I guess. And... Uh, maybe someday I will also like talk about this kind of satanic panic, um, fear mongering type stuff, <clears throat> like a witch hunt. I don't know. I'm just I'm brainstorming right now. Witch hunt, fear mongering, satanic panic, that kind of stuff. But um, I mean, lots of other people have have uh, said have done this, have talked about that particular topic more eloquently than I can. But I I'll shoot my shot too, I guess. And I'm. But that'll be um, a different video than this one. So this is just going to be me reading this. And you know what? Maybe I'll even look up Psalm 69 in my copy of the King James Bible someday. No, while I'm making this video, not someday. <laughs> so this page is titled The Satanic Band Ministry. I think it would be interesting. It would be neat to see what the hell this... Um, page actually is, like, in and of itself. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh my god. So, you can see over here where it says <clears throat> American Holocaust. We can already tell that this site is not just pro-life, but, um, very anti-abortion. I think that when I hear um, American Holocaust, it does make me think of genocide. And I think that, I think maybe, I don't know if they intended this, but it definitely makes me think a little bit of the concept of the white supremacist concept of white genocide, which is the idea that white people are being genocided, if you couldn't figure that out from the name of it, which obviously that is not happening, and it's just like a fear-mongering tactic to sort of um, basically um, demonize minorities, and in this case, you know, it's this, this is pretty clearly just about, or appears to be only about abortion, so that's more discriminatory towards women, and the very real problems that women face when, you know, when they're pregnant. So this is like exactly the type of website that I expected to find. I love this. The United States is in deep doo-doo. That reminds me of Varg Vikernes. Oh, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Interesting. Yeah, so of course this will be um will be linked below. Oh my goodness. Oh my god, silencing the Christians. Dude, your website is up like <laughs> fucking gay statistics. I'm gonna read that some other day. <laughs> oh, you can't see this because I have it set to only um take this part of the screen, this small part. Um but in the tab for um, the JesusIsSavior.com website, it, it has a heart as its icon, and that's very funny to me. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to read about Ministry, the satanic band that we should probably avoid because we don't want to be satanic, do we now? So it says here from First Book of Kings, verses 21-20, or chapter... I, I don't remember how to do Bible verses. Verse 2120, let's say. Thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. 
I'm too lazy to pull out the Old Testament right now, and this video, I think it's going to be a long one already because I just wasted all that time on the fucking homepage for JesusIsSavior.com, so. Ahem. <clears throat> One of the most evil rock and roll bands to ever form is a sicko demonic group called Ministry. Yeah, take heed, black metal fans. Whatever you're listening to, that's not evil. You know what's true cult, evil, sicko, demonic shit? One of the most evil rock and roll bands? Ministry. Ministry, you guys. Ministry. Can we just insert a clip of some ministry songs right here? Thank you. Started by Al Jorgensen in 1981, Jorgensen retired in 2008 after saving, I mean, serving Satan, excuse me, for nearly 30 years, their type of music, <coughs> noise, is called industrial metal. It's just a bunch of hate and screaming. This is not music by any acceptable standards. I wish I could do a Ben Shapiro impression. I'm really bad at it. I'd be like, this is not music by any acceptable standards. Anyone can bellow out noise and call it music. My music theorist, what is it, music theory, my PhD father who is has a PhD in music theory, he would never, he would not classify this as music by any acceptable standards. That's, that's as best I can do. They mock Christianity by referring to their satanic band as ministry. It is true that, um especially sort of more new age branches of Christianity do refer to like the sort of outreach program as ministry because it's ministering God's word to the people, but I don't know the origin of the word, so I can't say whether that is like, I mean, probably, honestly, that is what, um, that is ministry's intention with that name. I don't know. I'm not doing research right now. I'm, this is off the cuff. But, uh, you know, edgy counterculture stuff, especially from the states, is, you know, that's kind of their whole point, is to make these types of people mad. Because these types of people are kind of really mean and rude and sort of deserve to be made fun of, I'm afraid. I hate to say that, but, like, culturally speaking, I think that most people agree that this kind of page and this kind of page just kind of, you know, it's a lot of stress to be angry at so many things. Wow. Okay. Anyway. Oh my god, I keep I keep going back to that page. It's, oh, it's too good. It's like, it's like Doritos, man. You, have, you can't just have one. Okay, so this, this is the truth about ministry, going back to this. They are serving the devil, in fact. The truth of the matter, if you understand the nature of the rock music industry, okay, we're getting conspiratorial here, is that they are indeed a ministry, but they are serving Satan. In the following lyrics, they even refer to the listeners as their congregation. Oh, I wish I could have quoted this for my, uh, <laughs> for my black metal as religion videos. In their services, rock concerts, they make an offering to Satan? <gasps> I want to talk to David J. Stewart. Where is he? Somebody get him my number. I need to talk to him right now. <laughs> Literally, most rock bands are worshipping Satan through their music by attacking God and the Bible with their lyrics. And every fan that idolizes them have sold soul to Satan. That's cool. So, nice. I, I feel a little bit like a poser right now because I don't idolize ministry. And that's not very demonic of me, apparently. 
Okay, so um, the other thing I want to say is that the historical, like, medieval concepts of Satanism are typically, or they were typically, specifically, like, basically inverted images of Christianity, so it was specifically perverted, like, tr genuinely inverted. So if Christians have a mass, then Satanists and witches have a black mass or a witch's mass or a satanic mass. So it's structured exactly the same as the actual church and the hierarchy of the clergy is the same, except instead of God at the head, it's Satan at the head. So I think that's kind of like a cool, fun fact, I guess, about this. And and it's interesting that they are like they're still using these kinds of justifications for the concept of Satanism as like a direct attack on Christianity. And I mean, not to say that Satanism isn't necessarily a direct attack on Christianity. I think that Satanism like, I mean, as a concept, as I said in my Satan video, is like Satan, the, the figure of Satan is invented by Judeo-Christian religions, and it is based in Abrahamic religions, and so anybody using Satanism, it's not, an, it's like, it's not an independent religion, like, as a early religion anyway, when it was founded, it's impossible that it could have ever existed without Christianity also existing. So in a sense, like when an actual Satan, Satanic church was invented, I'm going to go with Anton LaVey as like the actual foundation of a Satanic church, although I know there are a couple ones. But I mean, that's the same with Christianity. So in that sense, um, just as it was spoken of in medieval times when a satanic church didn't exist, um, the satanic church was structured, or is, I guess, structured as like a direct opposition to Christianity. So I guess that is real, but um, I think nowadays the satanic church kind of more cares about like doing their own stuff and like, you know, just being a religion, basically. So not that different from Christianity, honestly, but with, you know, slightly different tenets, but it's just the same as, like, any other religion, right? Like, if you're Zoroastrian, or you're, I don't know, Pastafarian, or Rastafarian, or something, well, this is, this is news to me. Hell will be hot. I had no idea. Ministry art? totally blasphemous against the Bible, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. Here are the repulsive lyrics to their despicable song, Psalm 69, from the album titled Psalm 69, the way to succeed and to suck eggs lyrics. What? Here are the repulsive lyrics to their despicable song, and suck eggs lyrics. I feel like they just copied and pasted, like, the title of the song from whatever web page they found the lyrics on, because they still have the word lyrics in here. Okay, let's let's look at these these lyrics by the band Ministry, written by Al Jorgensen. Congregation, please be seated and open your prayer guides to the book of Revelation, Psalm 69. Whoa, 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 whoa. This psalm is in Revelation? Wait. Okay. Alright, I guess I will have to pull out my Bible. One of them. Which one should I pull out? The really old one? The, like, not that old one? Or the, like, kinda shitty new one? That's right, I have three copies of the King James Bible. Don't you doubt it, bitches. So I went ahead and grabbed myself not only all three copies of the Bible that I currently have in my possession, but I also have with me my favorite copy of Dante's Inferno. I have two copies, or no, three copies of that, and this one just happens to be my favorite one. And I also grabbed myself a beer, because apparently, according to Jesus'sSavior.com, beer is also evil, and also I was thirsty. In the lyrics of the song, it says that Psalm 69 is in Revelations. 
so I'm just going to look through and see if I can find that in Revelations. Um, there's no verses or anything, so I genuinely have to just look through there. I don't believe that there are any psalms in Revelations. I think that the lyrics chose to say that because Revelations is genuinely just the coolest part of the Bible. Like, you could view it as like a surrealist um, fantasy, but like the oldest surrealist fan. Not even the oldest, but. But it has all of the cool imagery that most people know, you know, like death rides a white horse, um, all the plagues and just, you know, people dying and beasts and the lion lying down with the lamb, stuff like that. Okay, so there is no Psalm 69 in Revelations, but now I'm going to look at my 1960s Bible which is an authorized King James Version, and there is, let's see, how well do I know the Bible? Not that well. There is a whole chapter called Psalms, so I'm going to go to page 495. So we are in Psalms now, and the, like, the Psalms are, basically, they are prayers to God, um, and they're from the Old Testament, so they are Jewish specifically, but Christians also use these. Psalm 69, which says, you know, Save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire, where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters, where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying, my throat is dried, mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. You know what? Actually, I would love to hear like a Christian metal band actually do an actual Psalm 69. I think that would be cool. I don't... I mean, I, the only Christian metal band I really listen to is Demon Hunter, and then I only really like two songs. Actually, one of my friends gave me like three As I Lay Dying albums, and I didn't even know they were Christian metal until recently, so... There you go, but they're kind of more metalcore. Ooh. Psalm 69, the actual one, goes on to say, They that hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of mine head. I have a billion haters, basically. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. Then I restored that which I took not away. Basically, everybody hates me, and I haven't even done anything wrong. I don't know, you can look that up yourself. It's, it's just, like, really depressing. Yeah, it's, it's a depressing story about how your life sucks and how God should totally smite your enemies. So, I mean, some of my viewers may or may not be familiar with ministry songs already. I am not familiar with any ministry songs, so this is genuinely... I, I got that clip for the stereotypes video, but I didn't really listen to the whole song. I plan to play the song over this recording if YouTube will let me. And if it'll be awkwardly silent, it'll be awkwardly silent. So here goes nothing. Yeah, so that's fun. Seems like a great song. What I think is interesting about like the conflict of these like hyper uber radical religious like fundamentalist y types like like Jesus is savior dot com, um between those people and like any kind of alternative music or even popular music really but especially alternative music i think is that alternative music is actually directly criticizing those types of people which i think is kind of cool because like when you're sort of on the outside looking at that and you're like oh well why are they so mad like why are religious people angry they're talking specifically about like corruption in religious communities and stuff and like specific doctrines that aren't that don't or 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 you could look at it from the other side and say well why are they so mad about religion because that's not what the religion ever said like specifically christianity you could be like oh well jesus never said that they're really just putting words in his mouth here and they're putting a little more than words in his mouth here if you know what i mean folks wink wink nudge nudge I mean, 69, 
it's more than just a number, folks. <laughs> Do I come across as like too conservative in my videos? I don't I don't really know where I'm supposed to fit in here. Like I'm trying to be not too vulgar for YouTube, but also like uh, I just I feel like my audience is gonna be like, wow, morbid sleep. Really uh really holding back there. He's literally saying he wants you to suck on the Holy Ghost and swallow the sins of man, like Oh baby, I'll suck on your holy ghost and swallow the sins of man. <laughs> okay, what was my point? I guess that's why, like, I, I want to be able to make my point. I'm going to be distracted if I'm thinking about sucking on the holy ghost and swallowing the sins of man. Like, that's a very distracting thought. <laughs> okay, based on the lyrics alone, I love this song. Just, just going to say that right now. I I absolutely love really not even these aren't even clever puns like I love that kind of shit I love that like disgusting gutter humor I guess dick jokes that's my jam this video was supposed to be a straight shot but I keep going off topic so much and getting really super sidetracked I'm gonna end up needing to edit the sh uh, the, the fucking the living bejesus out of this the living I'm gonna have to edit the Jesus out of this <laughs> um, no, today we're talking about Jesus, okay? Everybody is so scared about talking about religion, and it's such a taboo. I'm gonna be the counterculture cult one here, and I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say Jesus loves you, and also he wants you to suck on the Holy Ghost and swallow the sins of man. So, I guess whatever point I was trying to make, I forgot. Oh, yeah, I think the, uh... Lyrics of songs like this song and songs like this And I feel like this is gonna be a really boring video to like watch because right now I'm like waving my hands around like a crazy person, but you can't see me Okay, one I think that this song <clears throat> and other songs like it and the types of songs that these people think equal a satanic uh, band um, these songs are specifically criticizing sort of the ridiculousness of extreme radical religion, specifically Christianity, because Christianity has had a lot of power and control on Western society, quote-unquote Western society, so I'm going to say specifically North America and, or you know what, let's say the Americas, if we're talking about all of Christianity as a whole, the Americas and Europe. And it has also had a pretty enormous impact on the Middle East. And it, I think that it influences, I mean, I don't, don't, don't quote me on this, but I think that it, in, I mean, it must, it, I think it influences foreign policy for a lot of countries. So I think it is influencing currently certain conflicts in the Middle East currently, such as <coughs> Palestine, Israel. <coughs> what? Oh, God, I just swallowed my beer the wrong way. So I think that um, songs like this are kind of, you know, it's it's the little guy. It's just some random dude in the crowd yelling boo at the guy who's in charge of everything. You know, cr like Christianity as like a larger concept has been kind of pulling the strings in society for the last couple hundred years in English speaking nations, obviously, but also, you know, all throughout Europe and like I said, parts of the Middle East and the Americas and stuff. So I think that this type of like protest song is justified, like coming from a point of view where I don't think that religion is inherently wrong. Like from that point of view, I don't think personally that religion in and of itself is a bad thing or that people who are religious are bad people or that they are stupid or something like that. I think that religion is part of our world and people can are, are free to be religious. I think that's okay. I think that religion inherently is at least neutral. We could talk about it being maybe like inherently a good thing to be spiritual, to have some kind of structure to your life, but ultimately it doesn't have to be religion. Like if you want to have structure to your life, it doesn't have to be religion. So I wouldn't say that religion is like specifically moral because I feel like that might imply that everyone should have some type of religion or spirituality but I don't believe that I just think that religion is not bad I just think 
that it is fine to criticize, especially because there is plenty to criticize, specifically in Christianity, but also in other religions such as Judaism, Buddhism, and Islam are the top ones that I can think of right now who are using religion to gain power and control over other people and to moralize and to sort of lift one group up over the other. So I don't, I think that those kinds of criticisms, obviously that's, that's freedom of speech, that's criticism, that's hopefully it's constructive and doesn't spread more hate. Um, ideally these kinds of songs will help people sort of look and realize, yeah, actually like, Especially the last, um, the last stanza here that feels, like, I mean, I think it's a little, it's, it probably sounds really stupid that I'm, like, intellectualizing this song. It's a really simple song, honestly. It's basically, it's just kind of picking the low-hanging fruit in Christianity. I mean, it's literally named after the sex number, you guys. It's, it, this was never going to be a super smart highbrow song. But I do find that last stanza to be kind of, um, I mean, it's very playful, but I do feel like the, the fathers who write that eternity is used to fight the sword, to me, that points to, like, the concept in Christianity that the soul is eternal. And this is a little interesting as well, because, like, this, these lines by themselves, to me, imply, like, the concept in Christianity, which is not uh, universally held by Christians, but certain groups... Um, including Leo Tolstoy, believe uh, the, the kind of extreme pacifism, right? So you are, um, you, your soul is eternal, so that's the, you know, turn the other cheek Christian thing. So if someone hits you, you know, on one side of your face, you turn so that they can also hit the other side of the face. And that's because Christians believe that this is not your real life. Your real life comes after you die, basically. So whatever happens here is, I mean, it, it has meaning to the afterlife, but it is not, whatever happens to your body is not eternal. It doesn't matter. Your body is just a vessel. So people can kill you. People can spit on you. People can call you names. But as long as you remain faithful to your religion and you live a good life and blah, 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 then you're totally fine. You win. So this here to me feels like uh, the sword is uh, anybody who's like the enemy, I guess, of the the fathers who write that eternity is used to fight the sword. So like the enemy of Christians, I guess, um, just any armed enemy. I do think that the sword is literal and I think that the eternity is literal and the fathers, maybe it's literal, who knows? I mean, with, with the, with Christianity father is literally any male figure. It's very patriarchal since the uh, certain individual groups got a hold of Christianity and kind of made it the thing. Although I guess it was kind of always a little bit patriarchal. I think Judaism was a little bit patriarchal. But the early church, I believe, had female priests. I don't know. I don't have any information to back that up. But I, apparently the early Christian church was a lot more equal for the genders, because it was a counterculture, it was a revolution against the Roman Empire and any other existing societal structures at the time. So, JesusIsSavior.com goes on to say, It is not coincidence that the band chose Psalm 69. Oh, it's not? I totally thought it was a complete, uh, coincidence. There, like, there is nothing in these lyrics that suggests to me that oral sex is at all involved in any of any of this um these lyrics this is totally not about um definitely not about anything other than satanism The exact title of the album is taken from Satanist Alistair Crowley, The Book of Lies, Chapter 69. Let us quickly look at that. Okay. Wow. I can buy a flash drive that has the world's wisdom in the palm of my hand. Wow, it's straight up... Dude, it, this is straight up just The Book of Lies by Alistair Crowley. What is this? 
that's cool. That's kind of interesting. <clears throat> okay, Psalm 69, The Way to Succeed and to Suck Eggs is the title of chapter 69. Uh, admittedly, there is an entry at Wikipedia, wow, some really great research here, showing that Aleister Crowley was making reference to a sex act. Oh, so they think, okay, so they think this is specifically a reference to the Book of Lies, chapter 69. Uh, and then they're like, okay, admittedly, though, like, he was referring to a sex act. Okay, so this actually sounds like a Wikipedia entry from the song, because it says the title of the album is directly linked to chapter blah, 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 blah. You get it. You guys can read, maybe, probably. I don't know. If you can't, I will read it real quick. The title of the album is directly linked to chapter 69 of The Book of Lies, a written work of Aleister Crowley, where he uses the expression, the way to succeed and the way to suck eggs, as a pun for the 69 sex position. Suck seed and suck eggs. Well, that also makes sense. I was thinking of balls when I said eggs, but actually, okay, that doesn't really make sense. Seed makes sense, because semen is often referred to as seed, but eggs doesn't make sense, and that just reminds me of, like, that meme that was going around my Instagram feed recently that was like, I want to suck the eggs out of your ovaries like boba tea, and, like, that freaks me the hell out because, holy shit, <laughs> like, the, the, the level of horror that I experienced from that post, you guys, just, <sighs> I know most of my audience is male, so just imagine you have a vacuum cleaner, right? You got a vacuum cleaner. You stick it up your butt, and you turn it on. That's the fear that I feel when I hear people say sucking eggs out of people's ovaries like boba tea. Okay? Just just picture that real quick. So anyway, eggs is not the metaphor that I would go for for a uh, coom. I'd probably say baby juice, honestly. Or, um, wait, the sins of men. That's a good one. I like that. I'm gonna start saying that, actually. Oh, hey, buddy, looks like you've got some sins of men on your shirt. Might want to go wash up in the washroom. The number 69 is a very popular sexual term which refers to a specific sex act. I can't show you the album cover because it is too graphic. But it features a naked woman with wings. Okay, we're gonna look it up. Psalm 69 Ministry album art. I think I have seen it because I looked it up recently. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That's not graphic. Or is this like a censored version? That is like the least graphic thing I've ever seen. How is that even graphic? You can barely even see her butt crack. Okay. In this blasphemous song, Ministry sings the lyrics he wants you to suck on the Holy Ghost and swallow the sins of man. The song is about performing oral sex on God. <laughs> Can you imagine performing oral sex on God? That's not even possible. <laughs> God doesn't have a body. That's why he's God. Let's look up gods with bodies. Let's uh, let's go for like Shiva or something. Although then again, you know, there's lots of uh, there's lots of literature to suggest also that most depictions of gods are not literal; they are metaphorical. Uh, let's look up a god that has a dick. So, sadly, we're not getting any... There we go. Here we go, we got something here. I mean... Wow. Oh, that's his foot. Damn it! Well, let's look up Aphrodite. I'd perform oral sex on Aphrodite. Who wouldn't? Like, that's her whole point. Come on, man. Let's get some of that. Some of that wet ass pussy, am I right, Ben Shapiro? Sorry, that's I was listening to that. Uh, it's really stuck in my head now. Yeah, boy. 
69. Psalm 69, folks. You may not like it, but that's what peak female performance looks like. The God-haters go on to sing, The invisible piss of the Holy Ghost comes down like acid rain. So, I don't know why he needed to repeat the lyrics, because obviously he seems to be, like, super not into them. The only thing that I can think of, I mean, is, is like, the super easy, low-hanging, obvious fruit, which is to say, our boy, what is it, David Stewart? Yeah, David J. Stewart is a little bit repressed and is absolutely thinking about performing oral sex on God. I mean, if you really hated God, why would you go down on God? Really? Like, hate fucking God, I imagine, would look kind of different than uh, swallowing his, his the, the sins of men. I feel like that would be an act of love, you know? Alistair Crowley was a sexual degenerate, mass child killer, homosexual, fiend, and enemy of mankind. Crowley was known for openly having sex with his wife in front of guests to their home, committing all despicable manner of homosexual sins. Okay. Firstly, he had sex with a woman in front of a bunch of people. Biting his lovers with fangs, he filed two of his teeth down into sharpened fangs, eating a woman's excrement during ritual sex, group orgies, and boast of being the self-proclaimed wickedest man in the world. Yeah. Even more shocking is that President George H. Bush is married to Aleister Crowley's daughter. Truth is truly stranger than fiction. Yeah, okay. I mean, I don't know anything about Aleister Crowley's personal life or his daughter's personal life, but I gotta say, like, being married to Aleister Crowley's daughter, I mean, firstly, that's a flex. Secondly, his daughter may not be anything like him. Also, I think I need to start looking up Aleister Crowley a little bit more. Sounds like he had a great life. Okay, and then he just, like, says everything again. And, like, just the language that is used, like, the shocking documentary film title, and all caps, IN SEARCH OF THE GREAT BEAST, like, if you're looking for the beast, you're gonna find it. On their album, Houses of the Mole and Rio Grande Blood, Ministry again blasphemes the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as mocking President George W. Bush. Notice the crown of... Do they like George Bush? Like, I'm not sure. Now that they've said that he's married to Aleister Crowley's daughter, I'm a little confused. Is he... Is he godlike? Is he Christly? Is he godly? Or is he not? Is he a heathen? I'm not sure. Notice the crown of thorns showing Jesus Christ being crucified, the El Diablo satanic hand signs showing worship of the beast. So that's that's the horns. They're apparently El Diablo satanic hand signs now. I mean, maybe that's a thing. I mean, I know that uh, it does have different meanings in different places of the world, that's for sure. President George Bush's face, Freemasonry's official logo on Bush's left wrist, ba -bang, there it is, the official logo of Skull and Bones on the right wrist, what the fuck is that? Because it just looks like a skull, it's just, oh my god. Okay, so they don't like Jews or Mormons. Wow. Ooh. Okay, a false religion of Jewish mis- could show me, a, like, a not false religion. Like, okay, that sounds very, like, anti-religion. I'm, tr I'm trying to be, like, not mean to anybody here except for David Stewart. But this is just- this is amazing. This is some really amazing stuff. You guys, I highly recommend this website. Um, the only problem with looking at it means that it's gonna be easier to find on the internet and they'll get more hits. I don't know. Maybe they make money off of that. Who knows? Anyway, New World Order, Great Pyramid. This is some fucking Illuminati bullshit. Oh, oh, he doesn't get plurals right, but he spelled etc. right. What the hell? This is sus as hell, my guys. The picture is a denial and mockery of Jesus Christ. It expresses praise for the devil. It promotes 
anarchy, which is exactly what the elite want. Order out of chaos. I don't think that's what anarchy means. And also, anarchy definitely does not mean that an elite exists. Um, maybe ANCAPs think that an elite exists, but ANCAP is like a very contradictory <laughs> political ideology. Uh, it shows that whoever controls the production and sale of oil controls the world, and it is an admission that the band is supportive of the occult-driven New World Order. Wow. This is so many levels. This is... I mean, this is where people do the QAnon kind of stuff, I guess, is you start believing this. On a side note, that is awesome album art. I really like that. That looks so cool. That's right up my alley, though. Like, Christian iconography is my thing. I guess when they say it promotes anarchy, they're talking about how they've stylized the M in ministry to look kind of like the anarchist A symbol thing that graffiti artists love to paint everywhere when they're not even anarchists, probably. I don't know. It's, just, it's a cool logo, I guess. May I say, yes, you can, David Stewart. This is your blog. It is sinful to make fun of the office of president. I wish that I was filming my reactions right now. I feel like this would be more fun to watch if you could see my face. Or you know what, just pull up a mirror as you're watching this and look at your own face. Because holy fucking shit. What in the name of fuck? Like for me, a major red flag to be like, oh, this isn't like religion religion this is like a fanatical fundamentalist cult the major red flag for me like as a canadian who speaks english i mostly see american media canada also has their its own media too but like america is definitely the number one like source of just batshit insane stuff. I mean, if it comes from Canada, other people might think it's batshit insane, but if you're Canadian, it just seems normal. So I guess, who knows, maybe this is normal in America. But anytime I hear, like, people equating, like, any kind of not agreeing with the president, with religious immorality, that is completely insane. Um... The people who were in charge of Israel when Jesus was alive were the Romans and the Pharisees. And uh, Jesus was not into those guys, and neither were his disciples. They didn't directly oppose the Roman imperialist rule. However... I would say, um, just to make a, like a really kind of a crude metaphor here, the Jews and Jesus in Israel during Jesus' life are kind of a bit like the First Nations, or I guess in the United States they call them Native Americans, and the Romans, who are, can I remind everybody, the bad guys of... Christianity, like the ancient Christian stories. The Romans are the bad guys. Um, I would equate the Romans to the current day American rule because those guys are the colonizers. I know some of my viewers may be sensitive to such a term as colonizer, but that is like the textbook definition of what colonization is. is like a foreign power coming in, occupying a territory. Um, the Romans, at least, allowed the uh, native populations to practice their own religions. <laughs> so, America is actually worse than the Romans. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. It's just deliciously horrible. Uh, so anyway, showing disrespect for authority is now sinful. That's rich. It is acceptable, and our duty as caring citizens of our nation is to speak up against evil and protect peaceably, protest peaceably against crimes being committed by our government leaders. Aha. Uh -huh. 
However, we should always maintain a Christian respect for the office of authority. All right, that's some bootlicker stuff. Oh my god, I'm I'm very tired now because I am. I have been going. I think this is taking an hour to do, but let's just read this out loud real quick. I'm going to teach you something that few people understand. There is much fighting, misunderstanding, and debate amongst religious groups, Christians, and the public in general concerning the proper way that people should respond to evils in government. Okay, so he turned this article about how, like, ministry is satanic, didn't present any evidence, <laughs> and then went on to just talk about, like, evil in government. Okay. What I want to say is this. A nation cannot be salvaged that refuses to repent and turn back to God. According to Second Chronicles 7.14. I could pull up my Bible and uh, ref refer to that, see if that's the real thing. But you know what? I believe it. I believe that's a thing. Because Chronicles, again, that's Old Testament. Old Testament's got some whack shit in it. Millions of Americans are now waking up to the reality of tyranny and tension is building. When the pressure cooker blows, the banksters... Okay. We'll bring in foreign troops to march on American soil and harshly prosecute any resistance to their oppression and tyranny. Many Americans will be killed in battle. It almost sounds like he's, like, really hoping for this to happen. We won't stand a chance against them. God has promised to heal our nation only if we'll turn our faces towards him in prayer, forsaking our sins and humility. Okay, wait. Are they forsaking their humility? Because that's... What? The problem is that Americans are too sinfully proud and infatuated with their sins to obey God. Okay, so uh, basically America has to turn back to God. And the body, like the, the main part of this whole blog post is just he suddenly starts ranting about how America is um, sinful and gay, which sounds fun. I wish that America was fun, but America is not fun. But then at the last bit, he talks about it again. It looks like I haven't, I just kind of scanned it, but let's read it out loud. Speaking out as a taxpaying citizen who is tired of being oppressed by the government and standing up for one's legal bill of rights is far different than the punks, rebels, and satanic bands like ministry who attack authority in general. Honestly, ministry is just, as far as I am aware, just living their life. Like, they didn't do anything. They didn't attack nobody. I would love to see this article, but like, you know, updated for 2021, you know, post capital riots. All authority is allowed by God. Yeah, because his is the kingdom of heaven, not the kingdom of earth. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is some, the divine right to rule. That's monarchy put in place by God. If, if. You are imbued with authority because God gave you authority. Dude, America, the United States of America is, they pretend to be a democracy. So you have to get voted in, right? There are two parties. You get voted in by the people. And like, yeah, you can be like, okay, well, you know, it's God's plan. God meant for, you know, Bush to be elected, for Obama to be elected, Biden to be elected, Trump to be elected. But then you have to also kind of, make that argument also for bands like ministry like it's part of god's plan for there to be a satanic church it's part of god's plan for there to be gay people if god can like make trump president then god can also stop people from being gay and i think that <laughs> i think that god doesn't care if people are gay i think that god doesn't care if people are like having abortions and I think that God doesn't care who's in power, like... Satan's crowd are playing both sides of the nightmare. At the top, demon-inspired occultists are behind the evils of the New World Order, but at the bottom, heathens are working toward anarchy and revolt against them, which will be used as a pretext for smashing the American public. God is the only way out. And the wicked are coming down from the top, and the wicked at the bottom think they're going to resist and fight against them, but the end result will be complete chaos, from which will arise the Antichrist. I'm gonna click on that, I don't even care. Oh my god. Oh my god. They are so into apocalypse and destruction and i want to know what that image is that is europe and the bull that is a symbol of europe okay europe is the antichrist 
That has nothing to do with Revelation 17.3. We are going to look at Revelation 17.3. We're going to come from the oldest Bible, which has the tiniest little writing, so it's going to take me a little bit, so I probably shouldn't have chosen this Bible because I am starting to lose my shit here, and this video is already super fucking long. Oh my god, where's Revelations? What the fuck? Okay, we're going to look at my newest Bible instead to look at Revelations. 17.3. What the fuck? The famous prostitute. Chapter 7 of Revelations is called the famous prostitute. And verse 3 says, The spirit took control of me, and the angel carried me to a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a red beast that had names insulting to God written all over it. The beast had seven heads and ten horns. So, honestly, the only thing that we can say about, like, like okay, so this is a symbol of Europe, and... They're trying to correlate it to the beast from Revelations, which is the seven-headed name of blasphemy creature thing. And um, pretty much the only things that the bull of Europe has in common with um, the beast from Revelations is that it's a woman riding an animal, a being, but notice how this bull has only one head, and it's not red, I mean it's just, it's an art piece outside of European Parliament in Brussels. Communists have taken over, oh my god! Okay, so anyway, that's the end of this video, um, it was a lot of fun, um, I absolutely love this kind of bullshit just because it is so funny, uh, and I'm gonna link this page uh, at the bottom of this video because wow this is just this is some quality work here you know you couldn't make this up you can't make this shit up because if you were you know if you were like a performance artist or like a conceptual artist or something and you wanted to like make a page like this as like a joke or like a troll and just was trying to like make something like this to be like oh haha ha, yeah look how crazy americans are you, it would not be as perfect and flawless as this. Like, look at how many links there are in here, especially links specifically that you think they might go somewhere else. But no, they go to the same website. Right. That's that. Morbid sleep out. I keep getting so sidetracked. I'm really bad at this. Why did I ever start a YouTube channel? Thumbs down if you think I should quit YouTube. <laughs>